Okay, good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'll just very briefly summarize uh, where we left off in the last year, and then, and then we'll go forward. Um, the Mishnah says that, um, or the implication, sorry, of the Mishnah is that Kalim, which are not, um, which don't do Me'in Malacha, are not Nitolin um, the Shabbos, cannot be moved on Shabbos. What does it mean they can't be moved on Shabbos? Does that mean they can't even be moved L'Tzorach Gofam? Or does it mean they can be used L'Tzorach Gofam? Why should they be worse than anything else? All it means is they can't be moved Mechama L'Tzel. Now, the the background to this question is because even Canaan, which can't do Me'en Malachton, um, that simply means they're not omeid to do main malachton. They're not. They're not. It's not natural or normal to do main malachton. It doesn't mean they have no use whatsoever. Um, again, I, I, I want to emphasize a stone in the uh, in the in the in the um, in the garden, which is muksamachmas kufoi, has still um, a. You can still use it as a paperweight. It's not that it's a useless object. It's simply that it's not muchen, it's not omade for anything. There's nothing that makes this stone special. It's just a stone, it's just a piece of, of rubble. It's not omade for any particular use. So when the Gemara says, when the Mishnah, I'm sorry, says that shivre kalim, which don't do a melacha, for example, a broken uh, areva, a piece of wood, which isn't large enough to cover a chavis, it doesn't mean it's useless. It's still a, a lump of wood. Even if it's too small to cover a chavis, it could could still be used to cover a pach, to cover a jar. It's just you wouldn't keep a piece of wood for that. So it's not, and, and this 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 point was made by the uh, the the Miyuchas Luran, the Shifta Luran, which I printed in the bottom of page uh, page one. So you have what you have is basically let, let's take the case of the Shiva Areva. So you have a, a a lump of wood which isn't omade for any use, but it's not completely useless. So what happens if it has a? It, what happens if you do want to use it for so to cover a pach to cover a jar? So one model would be to say no, it's muksa machmas gufoi. It's the same as any other lump of wood, and therefore uh, it's completely useless. And therefore it's muksa machmas gufoi. It's become a stone. It, the, 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 tragically, your utensil shattered. It now uh, no longer has a uh, any use. It's become a clod of Earth, it's become a stone, it's just become a lump of wood, and therefore it's muksa machmas kufoi. Uh, sorry, muksa uh, klish, it's, it's muksa machmas kufoi, and therefore can't even be used to so for the certain komi. Model number two would be to say, um, no, it is still a shivri keli when it, it, it started off life as a keli, and therefore it can't, it doesn't become um, muksa machmas kufoi at this moment in time. It's not omade for any malacha, and therefore you can't move it mechamot l'tzel, much like klishim lachta issa. But it is still a keli, and therefore you can use it l'tzor kufoi or l'tzor mekomei. That's the shaila that we have in our um, our Mishnah. And very briefly, I mentioned last time uh, that there seems to be a couple of riots either way. We have a remar that says that you can't move, uh, that you can move a, a dangerous shard out of the way so that it doesn't do damage. Why do you have to come onto a unique exception of it not doing damage? Surely if you want to move it out of the way, it's because you want it to serve Makomo. And then we have this fascinating story of uh, um, of the, the with Rava, with his servant, where the servant uses a shard of uh, broken utensil to clean his shoes off, to wipe the mud off his shoes. And the Gemara wants to prove something from it. Well, what, what do we prove from this? We can't prove that it is, maybe maybe this broken shard is Mukta, and the reason it's allowed is because it's a Surah Kufoi. seems to imply that the Gemara understood that if a broken shard is mukta, it's completely mukta, it becomes like a clod of earth, and it can't be moved uh, moved at all. So this was the this is where we got up to basically in, in the last in the last year, yes. A little square of wood, right? Not yes. Covered. Yes. Would you and it's too small to cover up of it? Yes. On Shabbos, could you use it to cover up? No, then everyone would agree it's muksamach If you just have a lump of wood that's got no use whatsoever, that would be muksamach muskufi. Made, made for what? If if you made it for covering jars, then you've made it into a lid. That's what a lid is. If you 
if you if it's a piece of a jigsaw, then it's a toy. Then it's a toy. But if it's not a, a, a if it's nothing, if it's not a KD, it's not a toy, it's not a lid, it's just a lump of wood, and you didn't make it for any reason. Um, it's just a block that came off when you were making something else, uh, a side block. Then that is called a block. That is a lump of wood, which is muksamach maskufay. Here, the shayla is where it came from a shifrei kedi. Maybe it still remains with its kedi properties, and that is muchan, and that was allowed the circle for the circle and gomo. If it was made into a kedi, then it's made. Then it's a kedi. That that's a kedi. Yeah, one hundred percent. And then you could use it to come back. Then it's Akkadian, it has all the normal rules of Kadian, which is that only made for anything. Akkadian is your slave, it's Mukhan for whatever use you can uh, dream up for it. Absolutely, that, that would be a cliche, 100%. So I don't know if you have a little block of wood, which is like a beer mat, and you use that as a you know, beer mat, then that's Akkadian. If you have a little block of wood that's a jigsaw piece, then that's Akkadian, 100%. But the fact yeah. that there's a dispute in the drama, doesn't that suggest that whether you can take this charm? Depends on who you hold on with regard to when did it break and when when was it a take? Yes, it yes, yes. It seems a knockout blow. This seems an absolute proof that when the Gemara is arguing that a broken piece of words can't be moved, the Gemara means it can't be moved at all. Yes, it, seem, it seems a. It, it seems to shut the discussion down. This is not my own raya. This is the Prima Godin's raya, and it, and it seems a knockout blow. So. Oh, well. Because Rava holds that that Shivrei Kedi is not Mukta. But you see in the Gemara, in, at least in these particular circumstances, but you see in the Gemara that were it to be Mukta, it would be so Mukta that you couldn't even move it. So that, that seems like a, 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 a knockout. It seems a decisive argument. I only mention the Shadow because it's, it's an important one to think about and because there are senior place on both sides. But the Prima Godem seems to have found a, uh, a knockout proof. It seems to be a, a, an irresolvable proof. Yeah. Mr. Rua Paskin's like this. He takes on this proof as, as decisive. Yeah. Could it be, as we were discussing, we talked to him um, going back many years in the death of bread figure, that yeah. people things on the way up, there's a higher threshold to become clean in this instance, and that maybe you have to fall way, way below that line to lose your Torah's plea. So that something on the way up might not be a cleaver, on the way back down still is a cleaver. Could it be there's a, a double blow here? One, the fact that it is it's tumor cleaving, and two, the fact that it's now in a place where actually no one would even normally think of using it. That means it's actually now had two levels, two steps down, and it's lost its torah. That, 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 that's exactly right, and I'm delighted you're saying that. The the that in, that is the Shiloh, in a sense, that we're playing with over here. If you had something born as a lump of wood, you just found a lump of wood in the garden, everyone would agree that it is shivri, that it is, is muksmachal's gufay. An identical lump of wood that was once part of a KD, however, since it was part of a KD and dedicated and specified to human needs, maybe isn't. Uh, um, isn't mukta and remains mukhan to the degree that if you find it, and the question is how how far off, how decadified has it been? That's exactly our our, our side over here, and uh, um, the the, the halacha seems to be that since it is both broken and not omit for anything, it becomes it goes back to being a lump of wood. But but this is fascinating because it means that that history is relevant over here. Um, the the lump of wood is you have an identical lump of wood in front of you. If you know it once came from a Kaylee, it could have Din A. And if it never came from a Kaylee, it would be Din B. And the, and the history is, is 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 a factor in this. So the fact that this potentially it sounds like the same shard in Matza or Carmeli could be used means that it's it takes the second blow of it being in the, such a situation. True, but let, let's not get true, but let's not get into the nitty gritty of of Chutz and Kamlis. The, it, the prince, the, the Chutz and Kamlis is is a, is a much higher level discussion. But just the, the Mishnah, the Mishnah says that you have a broken piece of KD. If it has a use, if it's omid for use, then it's not mukta. But if it's not omid for use, ain nitolin. And the question is, how far is it nitol or not nitol? Cots and kamlis are all subsets now of what defines use and what doesn't define use. So that, uh, we'll, we'll get to that line more. I don't want to go into it now. But the, 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 w- the Mishnah tells us if you have a broken KD, which has a use, it's, it's, not, it's still a KD. If it doesn't have use, ain nitolin. What does ain nitolin mean? It goes back to being like a stone and completely useless. Or no, it goes back to being a clady, but one without use. And therefore, only muscle is for the same time, but also Muhammad itself. That's the that's the debate. Okay, let, let's move on to the Gemara. Amravi Hutama Shmuel, Machlokas Shinishbu Erin Shabbos, 
Okay, so the first attempt of the Gemara is to assume that our whole debate in our Mishnah is where it broke on Erev Shabbos, and we now want to know what is the status of this lump of wood, as we've just discussed. However, if it breaks on Shabbos, it remains Mucham. Now, what that means to say, let, let, let me ask this as a question and an answer, but it, I, I think it's a fairly obvious question, a very obvious answer, but just to spell out the implication of this. Uh, I don't understand. Shabbos morning, something breaks. It now, it was a KD, and now it's a lump of wood. And it's a uh, uh, a lump of wood that that um, that can't, that, that can only do a malacha, but not its original malacha. And Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda was of the view that were this to happen in the weekday, that would be called mukta. So again, a, a, a areva breaks, it becomes a block of wood, the block of wood can no longer be used as a receptacle, Rav Yehuda says it becomes mukta. And yet, if the same thing happened on Shabbos, it would not become mukta, because it's mukhan agar what, what would that mean? How, how would that make sense? What would be the logic? I don't understand. Friday it breaks, and we say lump of wood, no longer Areva, no longer Katie. Shabbos it breaks, and we say, oh, it's not Muxa because it happened on Shabbos. What would that mean? You mean the of when Shabbos came Correct. So we see from here, quite obvious line to say, but one that, that carries within it quite a lot of, of profundity. We see from here that Shabbos determines, fixes the status of the object throughout Shabbos. Not just in the restrictive sense with which we're familiar, that something is mukta when Shabbos comes in, it remains mukta, but even in the permissive sense, that even though it is no longer a kadi, it retains its status as non mukta in this Havamin or the Gemara. So, again, I, I just want to spell this out because, it, because the conclusion is, is, is quite radical. Shabbos started and it was a kadi, it breaks on Shabbos. It's no longer a kadi. By any measure, it ought to be a lump of words, according to Rabbi Huda. And nonetheless, he agrees that it keeps its KD status. That means that he understands, the Gemara understands at this stage, that being a KD is, 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 is a halachic a construct which is determined by the start of Shabbos, and it remains that status. Again, I, I, I want to explain why, why it's not obvious that this should be symmetrical. If at the start of Shabbos, something is not muchan, and the whole concept of mukta is, that something which isn't muchan at the start of Shabbos can't be used on Shabbos. I understand why even if it becomes muchan on Shabbos, it doesn't, it doesn't become permissible. And, and in a few minutes, we're going to explore that idea with no lads, with something coming into existence. That's the whole concept of muktzah. Here, in our Gemara, we see a, 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 a possibility of this same lambda applying the other way around. Something comes into Shabbos muchan, and it remains muchan on Shabbos, even though it's now just a, a stone. But it's, it's not muchan, it's, it's a clod of wood. It's, it's not a, 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 a useful object anymore, or well, not useful enough, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda. And nonetheless, it, it remains non mukta on, uh, on, on, on Shabbos. In other words, he understands the status of muchan to also be in, in, in Yeshivish or halachic terminology, we'd say it's a chalois. The status of being muchan isn't just a, a sort of a metzias, a fact of is it muchan at this moment in time, but, it, but it's chal, it's. it's, it's, it's defined or determined as its halachic status at the start of Shabbos, and therefore it remains muchan over Shabbos, even though it's since become uh, how useless. Rafael, you're not getting troubled. Can you not, can you not look at it subjectively and say that if you have that piece of wood, so it's broken off and isn't a key, if you yeah. designated it before Shabbos, you'd be allowed to use it on Shabbos. That is true. So if, like like Gary's jigsaw piece or, yeah. or bit mat, yeah. So what, you know, to learn more, I try to understand that that even though you didn't know it would be in this format, because you're because you're a on the object before Shabbos, even you know that that was. I, I'm coming to exclude your your pshat because if that was the logic that something that's muchan is muchan for all uses, then the same would apply on a weekday. If if it was muchan on weekday because it's a kadi. And inherent in something being an areva, being a kadi, is all possible uses for its broken shards also, then it would be muchan in the weekday. And you see, not like that. In other words, you see that it does drop out of being muchan by it breaking. And there's a logic to that. Fine. That's Rabbi, that's Rabbi Yudah's view, that even though it was, I'll come to a moment, even though it was a kli kibble before, it now ceases to be a kli kibble, not similar enough to its parents, it's not muchan for that. Because if you're being muchan, you're being muchan the whole object when, when, when it was still a kadi. 
I, I want to ask a question. As it is now, factually, is it only made for, for enough of use to be machan? And the answer is no, because we see if it breaks on air, Shab is not. And nonetheless, Shabbos determines its muchanus, its, its hachana status, and that remains fixed for Shabbos, and therefore this keli remains inside the muchan status uh, throughout the course of Shabbos, till not say Shabbos. And as I say, Baruch HaMad it ceases to be muchan. So, so you see that being muchan is, is a halachic category determined by the start of Shabbos, as much as not being muchan is a halachic category at the start of Shabbos. I, I hadn't understood that till this Gemara, and it may be La Halacha, this isn't true, by the way, because the Gemara does reject this. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I'll come to come in a second, but it, it, may, it may be that this isn't true. The idea that something that's at the start of Shabbos is not Mokhan remains lost to use for Shabbos is the essence of Mokhtar. Here, we're seeing the concept the other way around, that something that at the start of Shabbos was Mokhan, and it remains locked in its Mokhan state through Shabbos, is also part of the concept of Mokhtar, at least in this stage. That, that to me, is, 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 is new, is, is a Chiddush, is, is, is something unanswered. Sorry, you're also looking very troubled. Well, my my problem is that we, we we tend to this idea that the the concept of the mission talking about actually right here is only a piece that's broken but it still has some functionality and there's a limit that but we said that the idea that it has no functionality at all it seems to be the mission of Jibreel Kol that it will still be the most yes so it seems this logic that, that we're presenting based on the half a minute of the Gemara is only to some extent because we can we can have an idea when we have a plea that goes into Shabbos and it's a plea. It breaks to such an extent that it's no longer functioning, and now that would be the we would not say that those shards are still muhan at all. We would say because well, the shards have now broken to the extent that they are completely, and we would break the status of muhan from it. Okay. So that does seem to be contradict this idea that we're bringing that it's all about the status of muhan because it's not with those shards, but it's with each. Other. Okay, <laughs> superb. So let, let me summarize your question because I, you're absolutely right. I want to use this as as, as building block. Okay, so just to summarize what we've said so far, there's a machlokas Tanakam and, Rab, and Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda holds that an areva which breaks into a small enough piece that can no longer be used as a, as a base kibble, as a receptacle, but can only be used as a lid or a covering, that's not called me'in malachtoi, and therefore it becomes mukt, it becomes unmuchan. The Gemara at this stage says that when it happens in the weekday. But on Shabbos, it's fixed in its muchan state. It's, it's chal. Uh, there's a chalos muchan, it's chalom, it's a shame kedi, and that doesn't doesn't get lost. That's what the Gemara says at this stage. Now, if that's the reasoning, how far do we take this? The Gemara says that Rabbi Yehuda and the Tanakama only argue when this the break happens on Erev Shabbos. But when the break happens on Shabbos, even Rabbi Yehuda would agree that even that, that it can be little, because it, it came into Shabbos muchan. If that's the case, then maybe everyone would agree, even if it becomes completely useless. In other words, the Gemara doesn't tell us what the second half of its formula is. All the Gemara says is they're arguing about what happens on Erev Shabbos. When it happens on Shabbos, everyone agrees. Everyone agrees to what? Everyone agrees means that Rabbi Huda agrees with Rabbanon that as long as it has some use, that's sufficient. Or everyone agrees even if it has no use, it's sufficient. Because by the logic of Muchan being Chal as a, as a status, then even if it breaks to a degree where it has no use, it should still be mechan. Again, let's just summarize this in concrete terms. There's three levels. An arav is a receptacle, a, a, a trough, a bowl. Rabbi Yehuda says, if it breaks on Shabbos, but it's still a bowl, not mukta. If it breaks on Shabbos, and it can be used as a lid, but not a bowl, that's mukta. That's too radical a change with its parts. The Chomim say, no, as long as there's some use, it can be used as a lid, it's not mukta. But if it has no use, even we would agree it's mukta. The Gemara now says, all that argument is only when it happens on Erev Shabbos. If it happens on Shabbos, at Shabbos, everyone would agree it's Muchan. Why? Because evidently being Muchan is a status that's fixed at the start of Shabbos. If that's so, we can now speculate that maybe they would take this so far that even if it is useless once it breaks, it's, it's the third level, the level at which on Erev Shabbos, even the Rabbanon agreed, even the Tanakhama agreed, it has no use. Nonetheless, it's Muchan, and therefore it remains Muchan on Shabbos. And indeed, one of the great poskim and commentaries on the Gemara, the Sfas Amis makes this very argument the Svasamis takes your reasoning and says, since we see that being muchan is a status on Shabbos, which is determined by the start of Shabbos in this Havamin of the Gemara, in this stage in the Gemara, the assumption would be that it remains muchan even uh, um, uh, even on, uh, it remains it remains not mukta on Shabbos, even if it's completely and utterly useless. This is the uh, this is the, the, the suggestion of the Svasamis. And he brings a uh, um, a very interesting proof because 
Mazutra asks on, uh, I'm sorry, Rav Zutra asks, there's two Gesaris here, yeah, Mazutra, Rav Zutra. Rav Zutra asks on this opinion from the memra that says that Masikin Bekanim, that Masikin Beshivrikanim to Nishbru. You, that basically he brings a memra that shivre kanim that broke can't be used. Asks Mazutra of Zutra, when did this break happen? If this break happened on um, Erev Yom Tov, these are just these are blocks of wood. Why can't they be burnt? There's firewood on Yom Tov. Elamai, the break happens on Yom Tov itself, and you see that a break that happens on Yom Tov does make the object mukta. Now, I don't understand, says the Svas MS. Maybe this break happened to a degree that it became useless. In which case, everyone would agree it's Mukta. I have a proof, says the Svas MS, that even a break that is such a rupture that it becomes useless wouldn't become Mukta on Yom Tov in this Havamin of the Gemara, that, that the, the start of Shabbos, or the start of Yom Tov, is the one that determines the halachic status of an object. So again, let, let me just summarize what we've said so far. The Gemara in this Havamin thinks that once Shabbos or Yom Tov comes in, the status objects are fixed. If they're muchan, they're muchan, um, even though they break. How far is the Gemara saying it? Is it even saying when it's such a terrible break that it becomes completely useless? But what it means to say is a more subtle point. The Rabbi Yehuda that says that it has to do me'in uh, me'in that has to do something analogous to what originally did, if it was a bowl that has to still be a receptacle, would would continue to uh, to say that. Says the Svasemis, Mazutra wishes to disprove this possibility based on um, based on, on the fact that a, a wooden K that breaks on Yom Tov is, is Mukta. So he says, you see that the status of the halachic status is not determined by the start of Yom Tov. But if all the Gemara meant to say was where it still has some use, then maybe this is talking about a case where it has zero use, and that's why it becomes Mukta on, on Yom Tov. And in my sense of Svasemis, we see exactly your point. That in the hovermen of the Gemara, a keli that breaks on Yom Tov, even if it comes completely and utterly useless, does not become mukta. That's the, the Sas Emes's proof of this uh, proof of this point. Yeah. I got a question on that. In that understanding of the Rashi, is when he says they make the shiver keli, he's doubling mukta. The law hazu the tiltul. Yeah. That implies hazu the tiltul. That actually he's making the point that these shards still have a status of a kli. They're not, they're not, hmm. but, um... Why, what's your duke? Oh, we'll come to do it in a second. Let's just go through Rashi one, one at a time. They're not fitting. They're not. 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 not. They're 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 not. they and, and nonetheless, you can't yeah, because they're mukta. I was thinking that, that yes, I mean, obviously on Yom Tov, that's a whole strange thing, of course, because you've got that same object on Yom Tov is in heavenly, you know, this is wood which could be moved, and on Shabbos it's the most mukta thing in the world. Correct. So there's a sort of very strange, and the queen can go to Shabbos, that itself is a, a sort of interesting point. But, but, but I thought Balach has it's not fitting that in heavenly, it's. It's not fitting the tilt or that it's not fitting. A, I, I, I hear your point because you're saying Rashi says two things: there's mukta and it's not fitting for tiltul. But I, I don't think I I, I, I hear the double loss in there. But I don't think it's a diuk because it could be fitting for tiltul as hasaka, and, and therefore evidently what Rashi means is that it's not allowed for tiltul because it's because it's mukta. Yes. In terms of that opinion that it could be completely broken and have no purpose and still be a plea, that's not even the opinion of the Tanakhama. Uh, yeah. even so, so that's yeah. a third opinion outside the Mishnah. No, the Mishnah is talking about in this Havim of the Gemara, the Mishnah is talking about where it breaks on Erev Shabbos, but where it breaks on Shabbos, everyone would agree it can't become Mukta because on Shabbos things can't become Mukta. An amazing idea. What if something enters into Shabbos Muslim, it stays Muslim, it can't become Mukta on Shabbos. That, that's that's what the suggestion would be, and this is what the Sfas MS says. And he says, I can prove it to you because the Gemara says that it disproves this view from the fact that a broken KD becomes Mukta on Yom Tov. Asks the Sfas MS, what, well, no, it, it, what, that's no disproof. Maybe it's talking about a KD that, that becomes seriously decadized, has no use at all. At Omai says the Sfas MS, evidently, the, the Havim and the Gemara really meant to say that Kadim can't become Mukta on Yom Tov. Fantastic proof.
Um, however, How yeah. Piece of wood can't be used for firewood to the extent that it's not a KD for firewood. Because firewood is not a KD type use; it's a consumption type use. That this is the point that Adam was 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 around. That, that it's we we need to think quite carefully. Shabbos and Yom for our purposes now we're assuming are identical in Hilchos Muktzah. So there may be other differences, but we're not worried about that. But paradoxically, a lump of wood that comes into Yom Tov isn't Muktzah because it's firewood. But if it was a keli, it's not it's not set aside for firewood. It's set aside for use, not to be burned up. And if it's not Muktzah to be firewood, and therefore now we need to ask ourselves what's its status in terms of keliness. The extent that you can use it for firewood and Yom Tov. Yes. So it's not fully decadified. It is because firewood's not a KD. It's consumed. A KD is something you use. This is something you eat, something that gets burned up. It's, it's, a, it's a different class of usefulness. So I, I don't see why it really supports the the, the deer in Shabbos. Why? Because the fact that it can still be used, I guess it's, it's a different type of use. It's not using it. It's but, 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 consumption, just by definition. No, because however you read the Gemara, um, According to the, if your argument would be right, according to the Tanakama, why would it be Mukta? Right? It, 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 it's a different class of use. The, the, the Hasaka, Hasaka is not an inherent, burning is not a use that's inherent in being a KD because it, it, it's on the contrary, it's the destruction of the KD. A KD is something that you use, that if you've carved it into an areva, into a bowl, you don't burn it. So, so this is the first time argument that the, correctly you identify the ritva is explicitly not like the first MS because the ritva really asks this very question. Let, Rabbi, so let's just learn the ritva very quickly together. This is the top of page two. It's the bottom, uh, the, the, what is it, the fourth paragraph in the ritva. So middle of page two, um, Mosiv Mazitra. Um, it, I'm not sure if I printed your handout the same as mine. Is, is the ritva the top of the page? Yeah, okay. So fourth paragraph down begins Mosiv Mazitra. Um, you can't establish this price as where they do no malacha. So let's translate the ritual into a question and ask, answer. The ritual is asking a question. What is Mazutra, Rav Zutra, Israel from, um, from this price? Or maybe it's talking about where the wood and Kadi is broken so significantly that it can't be used for anything whatsoever. And that's the reason why it becomes Muksa on Yontav, in which case it's no Raya at all. The second answer to it, so the Ritva gives two answers to the question. The first answer to the question, I, I don't want to go into in too much detail because it gets us caught up in the Machlokas Rabbi Shimon and Rehuda. But very briefly, if you look in Kaftes on Madalaf, this quote is only a partial quote of the Gemara. It's, it's Rabbi Huda says it's Mutter, but Rabbi Shimon says it's Asa. And, and uh, sorry, Rabbi Huda says it's Mukta, and Rabbi Shimon says it's not Mukta. And uh, uh, the Ritva here is saying, how can anyone say it's not Mukta if it becomes completely useless? The second answer of the Ritva is a bit more accessible to us. He says, if the case that you couldn't use it was only in a case where it became completely useless, then the Bryce couldn't say that Kanim Shinishbu you can't burn on Yom Tov. What it should have said is that Kanim Shinishbu um, can be burnt on Yom Tov if they only break to a degree that they still have a use, but can't be burnt, burnt on Yom Tov if they break completely. That's the answer to the Ritva. But what you see in the Ritva is an assumption not like the Sas Emes, you see in the ritual the assumption that if it becomes completely useless, it cannot, uh, it, uh, then, it, then in the half a minute of the Gemara, it couldn't be used. I, I, I just want to, again, summarize what we're saying so far. So the Gemara, again, brought a half a minute, that something which on the Shabbos starts off not mukta wouldn't become it mukta on Shabbos. How far is the Gemara taking it? Is that even if the KD becomes useless, says the Sassam, Samus, yes, even if the KD becomes useless, because we have a Bryce which says, that uh, that Bryce, which the Gemara uses to contradict this, Mazutra's quote, which contradicts this idea, which he says a broken Kadi does become Mukta. You see that things can become Mukta on Shabbos. Well, what's the Raya? Maybe that's where it became completely useless, but where it becomes partially useless, it doesn't become Mukta on Shabbos. Says in some families, you see that the other minute of the Gemara was that where something, even where something becomes completely useless on Shabbos, doesn't become Mukta. Says the Ritva, no, not true. Really, something which becomes useless on Shabbos does become Mukta on Shabbos. Only something which becomes partially useless on Shabbos doesn't become Mukta. What's the proof from this price of the broken Kaili? Because the price says the broken Kaili becomes books and Shabbos and doesn't specify how broken it is. It must mean that any degree of break um, or, or change of functionality makes it uh, Mukta. But it, it, of course, the Gemara never meant to go so far as to say that something on Shabbos, which wasn't Mukta, if it becomes completely useless, uh, remains non Mukta on, on Shabbos. That's the, the summary of this uh, conversation. Sorry. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, the reason is not a it, it, w w let's do no last faster and we'll get back to it. Um, the, 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 it's, it's more complicated than that. It, get, it gets into the nitty gritty of rubbish in the middle, which we've, we've sort of avoided this morning here. Yeah, but either way, the Ritz is definitely not like the Sars MS. That that's that's clear. Yes, sorry, no. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes, and that's why we've avoided that other machlokes we were showing because I don't want us to get too caught up in the complications. Yeah. In a way, I, I probably should have just blacked out the, the first answer to the Ritz and just looked at the second answer to the Ritz, so to keep life simple. Okay, if you've lost the Cheshman, please listen to the recording. But, but the truth is, even if you don't follow every detail of what I've said, the core concept is an important one, which is the Gemara considered the possibility that something that enters into Shabbos as non muqsa does not become muqsa, and the Gemara rejects this possibility. So we're now, in next year, we're going to move into the, the alternative universe in which, uh, on the contrary, on area of Shabbos, things can change functionality, but on Shabbos, they can't change functionality, and therefore something can become mukta on Shabbos, but doesn't, but doesn't, can't become non mukta on Shabbos. They can't get a new functionality on Shabbos, and that's where we're going to start now. But the Hadramin of the Gemara is a fascinating worldview in which the Gemara thought that something can't become mukta on Shabbos because it's fixed in its, in its uh, KD status. Okay, we'll stop there for the day. Oh.